Welcome to Reading the Gospels Together for Thursday, September the 3rd, and today we are reading Acts chapter 23. We're right in the middle of a first century version of an episode of Law and Order, and Paul is, of course, at the center of it all. Now, through invoking his Roman citizenship and putting the local Roman commander in a bind, Paul has managed to gain an audience with the chief priests and the Sanhedrin, the highest religious authorities in Jewish life and law. And rather than make a stirring speech in support of the basic beliefs of Christianity, Paul instead chooses to play the parties within the Sanhedrin against each other to his own advantage. Now, while effective for getting Paul off the hook. It seems like a wasted opportunity. But the truth is, we only have this brief account. We don't have recorded for us all that Paul said to them. He may well have given them an extensive lesson as to why Jesus is the Messiah and why they should recognize this and follow. Knowing Paul, it's likely that he did just that, but we don't know. Luke chooses to relate to us only how Paul managed to cleverly manipulate the process to his own ends. Again, much like the plot of an episode of Law and Order, where the point of the show is not about simple right and wrong, but rather it's about the techniques that the lawyers use to win their case. Now, it's a common temptation for us to assume that all that Paul ever said is recorded for us. Of course, that isn't the case. Remember how he spoke from dusk till dawn just a few chapters ago, resulting in the near-fatal fall of a young man who dozed off under the warm blanket of words? That speech alone would have taken up more space than the entire book of Acts. Likewise, we don't know all of what Jesus said and did, only what's been preserved for us in the Gospels. As the conclusion of John's Gospel says, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. So we don't know everything. We're told a great deal, but sometimes the the details that we would like are just not there. So let's give Paul the benefit of the doubt and assume that he did more than just play the Sanhedrin with its opposing parties of Sadducees and Pharisees, the ancient version of liberals and conservatives against each other. But he does do that by identifying himself as a Pharisee descended from the Pharisees and a firm believer in the resurrection of the dead, which all good Pharisees believed, even though most believe that this was a future event, not something that had already happened with Jesus, and which the Sadducees most pointedly did not believe. Remember, the Sadducees made fun of Jesus for Jesus' teaching about the resurrection. So, a fight breaks out between the parties, and as often happens in politics, extreme positions are taken. The Pharisees, recognizing Paul as one of their own, suddenly proclaim him innocent perhaps even the recipient of an angelic message. And of course, the Sadducees go crazy. Once again, a riot breaks out with Paul at the center of it all. And once again, he's whisked away by the Romans to the protection of the barracks. But the plot thickens. A group of more than 40 Jews who have had enough of Paul and his blasphemies form a conspiracy vowing to have him killed. And then Luke (laughs) writes a verse which makes me want to tear out my hair in frustration. Listen. But when the son of Paul's sister heard of this plot, he went into the barracks and told Paul. Wait a minute. The son of Paul's sister? Paul has a sister and a nephew? And the nephew is in Jerusalem? (laughs) Where'd this come from? Let me tell you everything we know about, Paul, about Paul's family up to this point. They're from Tarsus. They're Jews of the Pharisee party. And they have somehow acquired Roman citizenship. That's what we know. Those four things. We don't even know if Paul was married before his conversion. And whether his wife either died at some point before that or, or just left him as a result of his conversion. We do know that Paul throughout his Christian ministry years was single. But now this bombshell, Paul has a sister, she has a son. The son is in Jerusalem, who somehow gets wind of this secret plot and goes and tells Paul and then the commander. Is Paul's sister in Jerusalem? 
Has she followed Paul there? Is she a Christian? Or is only the nephew in Jerusalem? Is he a Christian? It seems that for him to have heard of the conspiracy, he must have been privy to the plot, which implies he was a faithful Jew. But that's guesswork. I don't know. Nobody knows. Because Luke doesn't tell us a single thing more. Neither does Paul. Now, I'm the kind of guy who always wants to know more because I'd love to tell you more. But we'll have to leave it at that. As the old saying goes, we'll have to ask him in heaven. Although I have a feeling there'll be a pretty long line of people all wanting to ask Paul one thing or another. Maybe I'll ask Luke. Upon receiving Paul's nephew's news and not wanting to be left holding the bag on the suspicious death of a Roman citizen under his care, the Roman commander, whose name we learn is Claudius Lysias, whisks Paul out of town under heavy guard and cover of night with a letter in hand to Governor Felix, basically summarizing, better than I have done, what has happened so far. Luke, with a level of detail, he singularly fails to provide regarding Paul's sister and nephew. I'm going to have to let that go. Luke details the escape and the arrival in Caesarea where Felix has Paul placed under guard in Herod's palace, the remains of which palace built by Herod the Great can be visited to this day. Located in an idyllic spot on the shores of the Mediterranean, complete with freshwater pool, if you didn't want to get salty, I've often stood within that palace's remains and wondered just where Paul was kept. And we'll hear that he was kept there for more than two years. But you'll hear more about that tomorrow as well in chapter 24. In the meantime, I'm going to keep digging and see if I can uncover a bit more about this mysterious sister and nephew of Paul. We'll see you tomorrow.